Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. All right, welcome back. Yeah, welcome to Class 53, Advanced, the advanced portion of the class. Starting with a little review of what we were talking about in the last class, we were talking about in charge of. In charge of, in charge of, in charge of, in charge of. The pronunciation is important. In charge of. In charge of. Very good. And, um, yes, we saw in the last class to be in charge of. I started asking you questions. Right? El responsable de. La persona que manda. Is the person in charge. But ser responsable de algo is to be in charge of something. To be in charge of. Okay. To be in charge of the marketing department. Who is in charge of the marketing department? Who is in charge of the government? Who is in charge of, who is in charge of recording this show? Or who is in charge of broadcasting this program? Who is in charge? I am in charge of hosting the show. Yes. And we have people in our, our um, people here in this, our technicians are in charge of, of recording it and making sure that my voice level is, is properly mixed and so on. And, um, and uh, there are people at El Mundo that are in charge of making sure that the uh, that this show becomes available as a podcast for you. They're in charge of that. I'm not in charge of that. I'm in charge of sending them the show after it's finished. Uh, but and uh, I'm in charge of 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 recording this show on the radio, and I'm in charge of uh, I'm in charge of that. But I'm not in charge of everything. Okay. You're in charge of your own learning. I'm in charge of providing this show and trying to encourage you and trying to stimulate you, but you're in charge of your own learning. I can't do that for you. There's no magic pill that you can swallow. Okay? Hmm. So, who would be in charge of watering your plants if you went away? Ah. My sister would be in charge of watering my plants if I went away. For example, fortunately, I don't have any plants, so I don't have that problem. And I don't have a sister either, so I don't have that solution. But uh, anyway, who would be in charge of running the country if Zapatero resigned? Good question. If Zapatero resigned, well, the vice president would be in charge of running the, com the country, I suppose. Who would be in charge of asking these questions if I were ill today? Ah, well, I suppose uh, maybe Alberto or someone else would, would come and help out. They would be in charge of asking the questions. Mm -hmm. Who would be in charge of answering the phone if the receptionist weren't here? Maybe the studio technician would be in charge of answering the phone if the receptionist weren't here here. Yes. Ask me who's in charge of the Canadian government. Kyle, who's in charge of the Canadian government? Stephen Harper. Stephen Harper, the Prime Minister of Canada, is in charge of the Canadian government. Yes. And um, other responsibilities, for example, uh, in, in Canada... The most important sport, the most popular sport is hockey, ice hockey, but we just say hockey. I talk about it all the time on the radio because I love it. I love hockey, and we have the Winter Olympics coming up very soon, and the Winter Olympics are very important, and there is a very important job, the job of, of choosing the players for the Canadian National Olympic team, la, selec la selección. We say the national team. In English, we say the national team, which makes sense, right? The national team. And um, there was a player. He, he was a Canadian player who is now retired. 
and he was a fantastic player, and he played many years on the national team as well. His name is Steve Yeiserman, and he is in charge of... He's in charge of choosing players for the Canadian national hockey team. Yes. And it's quite a responsibility. You know? It's like uh, in Spain. If you're in charge of choosing for the selección, oof, you have a lot of pressure. And you will have to be prepared to, to endure a lot of criticism, particularly if you lose. If you don't win, people are going to say, why did he choose this player and not that player? Why did he take uh, this player and why didn't he take Raul, for example? Or why did he take this person and not that person? So being in charge of those decisions can be a stressful thing. It can be a stressful job to be in charge of those decisions because a lot of people are watching. A lot of people are, are paying attention, right? Okay. Now, we also saw in the last class, to be worth it. Is it worth it? To be worth. It's worth it. Vale la pena. Valer. The verb, valer. To be worth. But be aware here that to be worth really refers to intrinsic value. And what we can get for something. It's not the same as cuanto cuesta. How much does it cost? Maybe something costs 10 euros, but maybe for me it's worth much less or much more. So essentially, if you think about it, if something is worth more than its price, if something is worth more than its price, then I should buy it. If it's worth more than its price to me, then then I, I suppose the, uh, the, the, the item is more value, then essentially the item is more valuable than that money. So I should buy it every time, right? If it's worth more than its price. But um, the more you have of something, then the less, it bec the less valuable it is to you. And it's not worth as much. If I have a thousand pens... I'm not going to give you even one penny for one more pen because I don't want any. I don't want another pen. But if I really need a pen, if I'm desperate for a pen, if I'm going to an important meeting and, so, and I don't have a pen and it's a disaster and someone comes up to me and they offer me this cheap Bic pen, but it works very well, it's reliable, it, maybe it costs 30 cents in a shop, but they say, I'll give you this for 10 euros. Maybe at that moment, it's worth 10 euros to me because I need a pen. I'm going into an important meeting and I need a pen. So what something is worth is very often different from, well, different than its cost. And shops and businesses, when they are establishing pricing strategies, when they are deciding on, on what things should cost, I think they more or less consider what those items are worth to most people and they price them accordingly. And what will someone be willing to pay for those items? So it's a question of intrinsic value. How much is it worth? How much is something worth? Okay, so for example, if my grandfather has an, a watch, and he's dying, and he says, Kyle, take my watch. Keep it. Then he gives me the watch, and maybe the watch, maybe, maybe I could sell it. I could sell it for 20 euros, but I wouldn't because for me, it's worth much more. It's worth much more than that to me. But to you, it's not worth anything. Maybe it's worth 20 euros, or maybe it's not even worth 20 euros. But to me, maybe it's priceless because it has a sentimental value and therefore a high intrinsic value. But now grammatically, what I want to practice is it's worth it. It's worth it. It's not worth it. So it is worth it. It being the thing that you're contemplating getting. And the second it being the, thi the price that you're contemplating paying. Can be money or it could be time or effort. Right, so if if we say, well, um, I will I will offer you, if you're very very hungry, I will offer you a sandwich. 
for five euros. And, you, and I, maybe I'm really hungry and I say, yes, it's worth it. It's worth it to me. That sandwich is worth more than five dollars, so I will buy it. Well, it's worth it. It's worth five dollars to me. Yes, it is. But maybe I'm full. When I'm full and I'm on my way home and I have lots of food at home as well, that sandwich isn't worth anything. I don't want it. It's not worth five dollars. I say it's not worth it. In both cases, the first it is the sandwich. The second it is the five dollars or the five euros, I should say. So if um, it, it's essentially like saying the sandwich is worth five euros. It is worth it. Sandwich, five euros. It's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. Or no, I'm full. I've just eaten a big lunch. So the sandwich is not worth five euros. It's not worth anything to me right now because I don't want to eat. It's not worth it. Okay? So there's no definitive answer. You can't always say, oh, yes, it's worth it or no, it's not worth it. It's, it's a question of opinion. Okay? So, um, well, it's a question of opinion. Unless I say generically, for example, gold is worth more than tin. This is true. You know, unless there's some specific, if it's a specific piece of tin that has uh, some sentimental value or something, then maybe it's worth more. But generally speaking, gold is worth more than tin, right? An ounce of gold is worth more than an ounce of tin. Absolutely, it's worth more than, to be worth. And then we have, it's worth it. It's worth it. And maybe, maybe there's no cost at all financially, but if I say, hey, I'm going to give you free um, free guitar lessons. They're free. You don't have to pay anything. But you must promise to come here and stay in this room practicing for three hours every day from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Every day for three years. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, every single day. And I, say, I would say no because I want to take vacations. I want to do other things. I want to travel. I want to work. I want to do other things. It's not worth it. But the classes are free. But they're still not worth it. It's not worth the effort. Some thing, it's not worth the commitment. Some things aren't worth the effort. I mean, I could dedicate the next five years of my life to learning Chinese, but it's not for me, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Chinese, and the knowledge of the Chinese language that I could gain in five years, that's the first it, the knowledge of the Chinese language that I could gain in the first five years is not worth the effort that I have to make to learn it. In my opinion, personally, right now, for me, it's not worth it. I don't want to learn Chinese because it's not worth it for me. It's phenomenally difficult. It's too difficult, and I understand how hard it is to learn a language properly and how much you have to work. You have to make an effort. If you're not going to make an effort, you just have to quit. There's no point doing it halfway. You have to work hard. And with Chinese, because it's so different that it, it's, it's not worth it for me. It's not worth it for me to learn Chinese. Now, you need English, and you understand what I'm saying right now, so you obviously have a good level already. So is it worth continuing? I hope so, and I think so. And I would say yes, right? Yes, it's worth it. Is English worth the effort? Yes, it is. Because you open the world, a world of opportunities with the English language. So yes, it's worth it. Is it worth the effort? Yes, it is. Is it worth the price? Yes, it is. I think so. Okay? Because you pay both with money and with effort. I think, the, I think the commitment in terms of effort is greater than the financial commitment, or it should be if you're studying hard enough to learn properly. You should be working so hard that the effort is, in fact, greater than the financial commitment for most people and under, under most, I think, finan most financial situations, let's say, economic situations. Anyhow, time to move on. Expression of the day. All right, our expression of the day today is to chew, like I'm chewing my lunch, to chew the fat, to chew the fat, which is to talk to someone, to chat, charlar. I'm chewing, I was chewing the fat with Alberto this morning in the office, and he was telling me some interesting things about his radio show. And I was telling him some interesting things about my radio show, The Verb Circus. Yes, 
we were chewing the fat about our radio shows. I was talking about the verb circus, and he was talking about everyday English. I was talking about how I have a CD for sale in the Vaugan Tienda. That's right, for just nine ninety nine. There you go, a little, a little, a little mini advertisement for my CD. Anyhow, to chew the fat, right? To discuss something, to have a talk, to talk with someone about something, to chew the fat. Because imagine you have a piece of fat in your mouth. What's going to happen? Your mouth is opening and closing, dong, 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 chewing, chewing, chewing. It looks like you're speaking. And to chew the fat, the expression means, essentially, to talk about something, to chew the fat. Okay. Okay, now, I was in Canada last December, and it was about minus 10. How was the weather? Well, it was cold. It was very cold. ¿Qué tiempo hacía? Hacía frío. It was cold. How was the weather? How was the weather? It was cold. It was boiling. Very hot. We can say it was boiling hot. Or it was mild. It was around zero, maybe, or a little bit above. It was mild. It wasn't very cold. It was freezing. It was 10 degrees below zero. It was freezing. 10 degrees below zero. It was freezing. Incredible. It was freezing. All right. So, how's, how's the weather? How was the weather? How was the weather? Oh, it, was, it was three degrees. It was five degrees. It was ten degrees. It was very hot. How was the weather? We say. How is the weather? Oh, it's good. It's warm. How was the weather yesterday? It was cold yesterday. It was freezing. Okay. I want to move on and talk about... Uh, because, well, we have about two minutes, so I have to move on very, very quickly. Vocabulary of the day. Yes, it's time now for the vocabulary of the day. The first word today, rascacielos. Skyscraper, yes. Simplificar. To simplify. The verb to simplify, simplify, simplify. Tartamudear. To stutter. 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 To stutter. Tartamudear. To stutter. S-T-U-T-T-E-R. To stutter. Very good. Rascar. Romper tela, papel. That's right. To tear. So, romper... Is, is break. If we, I broke the computer. Oh, no, I broke the computer to break. But romper papel is to tear paper. We don't break paper. We tear paper or we tear uh, tela. I tore my shirt. Oh, no, I tore my shirt to tear. Tomar el pelo. Tomar el pelo. To tease. To tease. T-E-A-S-E. -E, to tease. All right, very good. The next point we have is translation list number five, but we are out of time. So I promise that we will spend time practicing all of translation list number five in the next class. So you, don't, you won't want to miss it because it is a good list. Trust me, it's a very good list. So I will see you then, same time, same place, tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>